तव मुरति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो हमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो हमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओम माइडी our beloved Gansha Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all of you Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. <clears throat> For this week, Yuha course is on a review week. So today we're going to analyze Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine words in the form of the Vachnamrutha. Gadada Middle Chapter 59th Vachnamrut, which is titled Ultimate Liberation. Swami Narayan Hare. On Sudhi 12th, 7th, 1881, August 6th, 1824, that's the American date, Swami Sri Sajanji Maharaj was seated on a large decorated cot on the veranda outside the mandir of Sri Vasudeva Narayan in Dada Khachar's Darbar in Gadara. He was dressed entirely in white clothes. At that time, an assembly of munis as well as devotees from, from various places had gathered before him. Thereupon, Sri Jumarat said, In the four Vedas, the Purans, and the Itihas scriptures, there is but one central principle and that is that only God and His Sant can grant liberation. In fact, God's Sant is greater than even Bhav, Brahma, and other Devas. So when one attains God, so when one attains God or His Sant, then apart from this, there is no other liberation for the Jew. This itself is ultimate liberation. So then the first paragraph, Maharaj is stating that the four Vedas, the Purans, and the Itiya scriptures, see, these are all scriptures which are in Hinduism. Hinduism consists of the most fundamental scriptures in the whole world. And Hinduism is such an ethnicity, such a culture, such a religion, that it has no time when it was founded. Other religions, such as Buddhism, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, actually have an era and a date where it was founded. But there's only one religion in the whole world where there is no particular date or era when this religion, or you can say this ethnicity of Hinduism, actually started on this earth. That's how ancient, that's how glorious it is. And from Hinduism, there's many parts such as scriptures, uh, deities, uh, worship, rituals, so on and so forth. But the most fundamental part of Hinduism is that scriptures and the Vedas, there's four Vedas, are the most fundamental. Maharaj is saying the four Vedas, the Purans, and the Itihas scriptures, historic scriptures, these are all scriptures in Hinduism. There is but only one central principle. A unique thing about Sri Maharaj, Bhagwan Swami Narayan, was that <clears throat> may we read the Shikshapatri, may we read the Vachnamrut, but Bhagwan Swami Narayan extracted all of the essences all of the principles, the main points of all these very, very great, large, very hard to comprehend scriptures. And Bhagwan put it in the most simplest terms that even those darbars, those barvards, those low casted people who were sitting in front of Maharaj in that time could understand. 
that is one of the uniqueness traits of Bhagwan Swami and how he is Sarvopari or Supreme. Just think about it. Taking a very, very jumbo giant, jumbo giant A380 airplane and making it small enough so it can fit in your hand. How hard can that be? How difficult can it be? Can it be possible or not? That's the first question. Shrinking the A380 so it can fit on the palm of your hand. That's something that is impossible. Yet technology has not found anything. Yet Bhagwan Swami Narayan, his whole method of teaching, his technique, his unique way of delivering the point from himself to the other soul in front of him was beyond comprehension and phenomenal. Because Bhagwan Swami Narayan extracted all these principles and delivered it to these souls in front of him. But not only that, but even till this moment right now, Bhagwan Swami Narayan incarnated 239 years ago and spoke the Vachanamrut about, let's say, 200 years ago. Yet, in a two year, 200 year span, these words that have been etched into the Swami Narayan religion, into Hinduism, and all around the world in various languages, is providing and helping one attain ultimate liberation. That's how fundamental, that's how vital this Vachnamurt ma manuscript is. That Bhagwan Swami Narayan spoke very, very easily. Just as easily as someone speaking to another person, just as easily as someone reading off of a, a, a book, Bhagwan Swami Narayan spoke these principles, proving that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is Sarvopari. Now, based off of that, we read that in the four Vedas, the Purans, and the Itiya scriptures, there is but one central principle, one central principle meaning the essence, and that is that only Bhagwan Swami Narayan says, this Vachnamrut is translated exactly according to the Gujarati text. There is little to none errors regarding the wording, but Bhagwan Swami Narayan says that only God and His Sant can grant liberation. Only God and His Sant. Meaning, He did not say deities, He did not say Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. He did not say any other other form or any other person, nothing. He said only God and His Son. Now, a question arises, which God and which Son? Which God and which Son is Bhagwan Swami Narayan talking about? Well, if we look at it from a perspective of an outsider, we are going to take that into context of whatever God we are worshipping currently and whichever sant or saint or guru that we are following currently. But if we look at it from the vision of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and what level he has spoken at, at this level, what level is he speaking from, then directly we can understand that Bhagwan has said God he has not said me, myself, but as a follower of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, God is for us Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and His son for us is His Ekantik Sat Purush in the form of our Puja Guruji. <clears throat> Only God and His son can grant liberation. Grant liberation. Liberation is a word that if we just define in a very, very... Uh, short term, it's to become free, to free oneself. Now, one can attain liberation from jail, one can attain liberation from, you can say, 
graduating from high school, I liberated myself from high school, if one thinks of it in that way, one can use liberation from running away as a refugee from one country to another. There's many forms of liberation, but Bhagwan Swami Narayan is talking about ultimate liberation from this body, from this cycle of life and death. This continuous cycle that we are traveling for countless times, from there Bhagwan is saying that only God and His Son can grant liberation. Only God and His Ekantik Satpurush can grant us liberation from this cycle of life and death that we have become in, we have been becoming such animals, creatures, these 8.4 million types of species. Only Bhagwan and His Son can grant liberation. This is the central principle. This is what Bhagwan is saying that out of the four Vedas, Purans, Itiyas, only one sentence. Bhagwan has read all these, Bhagwan knows all these scriptures, these Purans, Itiyas, and these scriptures, if we can take one room and we can fill these books up, it will still be small. A, even we say 15 by 15 room, it still would not fit all the scriptures of Hinduism. That's how grand of a scale Hinduism runs on. And that's how that's how much it's enriched with scriptures. But the main point is we don't have to read any of those scriptures. The main point is Bhagwan Swami Narayan's compassion upon us that he did not tell us to find the essence. He did not ask us or command us to read these scriptures and find the essence. And, and if you find it, then, then you will be able to attain liberation. No. Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself took his daya and gave it to us. To, he, 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 he showered his compassion by just putting in one sentence for us that only God and his son can grant liberation. That's it. That's all the central principle it, it, there is. Moving on. In fact, God's son is greater than even Bhava Brahma and other devas. God's son. Now, Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying this. God himself, the compilers of this scripture, the Vachnamrut, is four Sadgurus. Sadguru Koparan Swami, Sadguru Muktanan Swami, Sadguru Shukanan Swami, and Sadguru Nityanan Swami. Out of these four santos, these four santos would write while Bhagwan would speak and then they would share each other's notes and make a manuscript and actually verify it by Bhagwan Swaminarayan and then it was published out to the public. Copies were made. But four santos wrote this but not some may be thinking, you know, santos wrote this so they, they might have wrote about themselves. But in fact, Bhagwan Swaminarayan has spoken and these santos have written word to word. And here it says, in fact, God's sant is greater than even Bhava, Brahma and other devas. Deities, Brahma or any other, any other, you can say, entity that is, is, uh, is mentioned here. God's sant is greater than that. An example is... Harpuja Guruji has said in his Gunatir Gnan Yagna Katha when he did this Katha in Junagar, he's given an example of Bhagwan Das Swami. Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami lived in Junagar and <clears throat> Bhagwan Das Swami was a, was a saint living with Gunatitanan Swami. Now, Gunatitanan Swami's level, his spirituality was compared to no one that's how great of a sant he was and he is Sadguru Gunathyan Swami is an Anadi Mukta meaning uh, who is from Akshardham and directly Bhagwan Swami and himself has commanded him to talk about the glory of his supremacy, satsang itself there's many many topics but Bhagwan Das Swami 
was living with Swami and Bhagwan Das Swami had a good relationship with Swami. But one time, Brahma, the creator of this universe, came in the form of a human and met Bhagwan Das Swami. He bowed down to Bhagwan Das Swami and said, He, Brahma himself, the creator of this universe, bowed down to Bhagwan Das Swami and said, that Swami, I have not yet had the darshan of Gunatitan Swami, and I want to have the darshan of Sadguru Gunatitan and Swami. He is in Anadi Mukta. He is Bhagwan Swami Narayan's great Mukta, and I want to have his darshan. Please arrange something for me. So Bhagwan Das Swami said, "Wait here. Let me go and speak to Swami." So Bhagwan Das Swami went in and spoke to Swami and, and, and told Swami that Brahma is here to have your darshan. Swami says, where is he? He's, Bhagwan Das Swami said, he is outside at the doorstep. He's waiting for your darshan. So Swami confirmed he is already here, right? So Bhagwan Das Swami said, yes, Swami. So Bhagwan Das Swami, and then Gunatya and Swami said, then please bring him in. And Bhagwan Das Swami brought Brahma in. And Brahma had Gunatitanan Swami's darshan, bowed down, prostrated to Gunatitanan Swami. The creator of this universe prostrated and did downwards to Gunatitanan Swami, did his pujan, and then left. And then Gunatitanan Swami called Bhagwan Das Swami and told him in his ear that don't bring these. Rajoguni and Tamoguni people near me. That's all he told Swami. But from there, we can understand that even Brahma doesn't have the capability to have the darshan of such a God realized Ekantik Satpurush in the form of Gunatitanan Swami. That's how great of a glory. God's son has on this earth or may it be in Akshardham or may it be anywhere. It says, in fact, God's son is greater than even Bhav, Brahma, and other there. So when one attains God or his son, then apart from this, there is no other liberation for the Jew. This itself is ultimate liberation. <clears throat> See, spirituality is all based on blind faith. Blind faith is something which is very, very difficult to develop. For example, suppose that we have a wall here, and I tell you that there is $10 million and a very, very expensive diamond in a briefcase outside of the wall. How much would you believe me? It's not possible. It's kind of like, what are you talking about? There's a street outside. There is nothing. But suppose you keep faith and you go take the exit door and go outside and find a briefcase and open it and you find the $10 million in the diamond, then how much convinced would you be that yes, because I kept faith, this is what happened. In the same way, the Ekantik Satpurush shows us that this is Bhagwan. Now, if we look at it from the mere mundane, not divine eyes, we can say our naked eye. If we look at the idol of Bhagwan, what do we see? Our marble statue. Straightforward, right? If I can put it bluntly, a marble statue. But this Ekantik Satpurush that we have met in the form of our Puja Guruji says that this is not a mere statue. This is Bhagwan himself. This, the, the idol which is in Akshardham, which I see in my heart, I have given to you here in the form of Pyura Gansha Maharaj. Puja Guruji puts this statement out. There is... Ten people in front of Puja Guruji. May it be Santos, may it be Bhaktos, may it be anyone. This statement 
when it's put out, all those 10 individuals graph of accepting this talk will be different. Some will understand it 5%. Some will understand it 15%. Some will understand it 50%. Some will understand it 80 Some will even understand it 100%. But that level of understanding differentiation is all due to the lack of blind faith. In the words of the Ekantik Satpurush, religion is all on blind faith. And here, Maharaj himself says, so when one attains God or his son, then apart from this, there is no other liberation for the Jew. This itself is ultimate liberation. Now a question arises, have I attained God or or his son, Maharaj does not say God only. Maharaj says, or his son. According to the Vachnamrut Gadada, first chapter 68, Bhagwan Swami Narayan sta- uh, states in this Vachnamrut that I reside, I reside in the eight types of murtis, murtis meaning idols, if we can say. If we can point out idols in the form of stone, wood, metal, these are the materials these idols can be made from. Earth or sandalwood paste, engraved or drawing, sand, gems, or mental. Bhagwan himself says, I reside in these eight types of murtis as well as my sant. Bhagwan says this. That I reside in these eight types of murtis along with my son. From this, we can understand that Bhagwan is not saying only God. That's why he has said that if you have not received the form of God, but if you have received such a God realized son, this word here, son, used here is not for any ordinary son, but it is used for one who has a constant relationship with Bhagwan, who is talking with Bhagwan, who is who has a friendship with Bhagwan, who has a relation with Bhagwan. Such kind of an such kind of an ekandik sant. Bhagwan says or his sant. Bhagwan does not put and his sant. So that means that liberation can be done, performed by an ekantik Sadpurush alone. Therefore it is put or then apart from this, there is no other liberation for the Jew. Some things, sometimes this soul, this Jew, looks for many, many different opportunities, doors, wherever one sees, oh, I might get some oil here. They go there. Oh, I, if I listen to this, then I'll get this. If I listen to this, I'll get this. Many, many different doors we open. But we forget to open and keep one door open. Due to that, we don't attain liberation. Bhagwan Swaminarayan here wants us to make our vision very, very focused. Focused in the fashion where what we have received, who we have attained, don't think, comprehend, or understand anything greater than that. Bhagwan Swaminarayan says in the Vachnamrut Karyani second chapter that there is no Maharaj besides this Bhagwan and and there is no Sant like this in the universe, in the in the entire universe. What is that stating? Only one and no one else. And for spiritual progress, only one is the main essence we can say selecting holding on to keeping faith in one god and one son and bhagwan swami Narayan wants us to develop this vision as well because he says here when one attains god or his son then apart from this there is no other liberation for the jew there is no other option we can say so the option of worshipping others, the option of 
doing other rituals and other types of pujans, is that really a factor? I'm not going to answer that, but definitely we should think in our head that who we have attained, who we wanted to attain after death, we have attained here manifest in the form of Pyura Gansha Maharaj in the form of our Puja Guruji. According to the Vachnamrut Gurda, last chapter, second. This itself is ultimate liberation. Ultimate liberation meaning the liberation which can grant moksha, which can get this soul out of this body and numerous bodies of cycle of life and death and directly take it to Akshradham, the final residing place for the soul, where after going there, there is no coming back. After going to Akshradham, there is no return. That place we are, we are headed towards, that place we want to reach in this life, Bhagwan says in the Vachnamrut that I want to sit in the Pankti, or you can say in the row full of muktos in Akshardham. Have that kind of luxe, have that kind of goal, have that kind of target. Then what is it for this world? This world seems insignificant to those who have firmly decided that they want to make this their last life and attain Bhagwan Swami Narayan. This world, any kind of situation going around, anything happening, it seems very, very insignificant because that focus is locked on. That target is locked down only to one place, and that is our final destination, Akshardham. Moving on. Furthermore, only those who have accumulated a great number of merits, meaning deeds, from performing, sorry, merits, meaning you can say good, a credible uh, credit, credit, from performing good deeds, receive the opportunity to serve God's son, but those who have a few merits do not. Only those who have accumulated a great number of merits. This proves, may other religions believe or not, but this proves that there is a cycle of life and death, there is re reincarnation. Because how can one accumulate merits well one has to live other lives in the past from those lives however great of a merit we have we have accumulated those good deeds we receive the opportunity to serve god's son it's kind of like suppose you want to buy a one hundred thousand dollar car but in your bank balance you only have nine hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars you're only one dollar short. It's still not enough to buy the car. In the same way, suppose we have taken many, many lives and we have done many, many good deeds, but we are just one hair short, one dollar short. Then it's still not possible to serve this God and Sant. Only when Bhagwan decides, only when Bhagwan Zekantik Satpurush decides that I want to liberate this soul, I want to take it, this soul in my service, then only does this soul become capable of fulfilling that one dollar and making his bank balance a hundred thousand dollars to buy that car. This soul becomes capable of taking a life in satsang, taking the body, taking a life in satsang, and actually associating and serving the Ekantik Satpurush, his santo, his bhakto, that's the only way it can happen. So then, if it's this rare, then for those who we live with in satsang, may it be in mandir, may it be outside of mandir, may it be devotees, may it be santo and bhakto that are all around us, their greatness, their glory, 
how rare it is for us to even come encounter with such kind of santo. And if we think about it, each soul, we don't know how many merits that soul has done in the past. How great of a soul it is, they may be who are in front of us. We cannot understand because we do not have that vision. But definitely, we can accept. If we do not have the vision to see inside of someone and understand them, we can definitely accept and with Mahima or glory see that every soul that is surrounding me here in satsang is very, very great because Bhagwan Swami Narayan says that for only for those who have accumulated a great number of merits from performing good deeds receive the opportunity to serve God's Sant, but those who have few merits do not. Do not meaning that $999,000 bank balance, $1 shy is that do not. But that $100,000 person definitely does have the capability to serve. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan has developed many, many santos and bhaktos that have shown us this path of serving. Uka Kacha, a bhakta of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, his daily ritual in the morning would be to pretty much go to the Gela River and from there in the morning before sunrise, maybe 4 a.m., him and his wife would sweep the way from the Gela all the way to Gadara where the Santos Dharamshara would be. Why? Because when the Santos would wake up at 4.35, 5 a.m., then the Santos would be able to walk without any kind of thorns or any kind of jagged rocks or stones so it would not hurt their feet. This is how much emotion, bhavna, mahima, they would do this seva for. And this this, this seva Uka Kachar did for 15 years every single morning. Imagine his sraddha level. Imagine his mahima level. Imagine his level to please God santo. One time, Uka Kachar was sweeping and he swept the whole way and then he went inside the Dada Kachar's Darbar and did more seva. And one of the santos asked that I never see you doing puja, Uka Kachar. Why do you not do puja? Uka Kachar said, I do do puja. You don't see it? He says, where? How many murtis do you have in your puja? Uka Kachar said, 500. This, this Swami was baffled. He said, 500 murtis? How big of an asan do you need? Said, Ukakachar said, all these santos, each and every santo living here are my murtis. Meaning, Ukakachar saw Bhagwan in those santos. We can say that. And from there, Bhagwan Swami Narayan became so pleased for 15 years, every single day, non-stop, doing this seva in the morning, Bhagwan Swaminarayan became so pleased that Uga Khachar's name was etched forever in the Vachnamrut, Gadara Middle Chapter 25. Uga Khachar is mentioned in the Vachnamrut saying that those who want to eradicate the Vasna or the desi desires of or the sins or everything from the past if one develops an example, Maharaj gives the example of Uka Kachar. If one develops an addiction to serve God Santo like Uka Kachar, then one would be able to do so. This is Bhagwan Swami Narayan's glory. Not only that, but Uka Kachar, for serving Santos, his name became etched. That's one thing, but not etched in. The Vachnamrut, yes, that is in, but etched in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's heart. That's the main point to take. <clears throat> the Vachnamrut is forever. The Vachnamrut is all, will always be there because it's Bhagwan's words. But may, may a person's name be etched 
in a book in the world or anywhere in the news or anywhere. That's not as important as our name or our existence being etched in the hearts of God in his Ekantik Sat Purush. Because only then does that Jew be attain ultimate liberation. Only when God or his son becomes Raji from the heart that that soul be attains ultimate liberation. May one know it, may one not know it, may the world know it, may the world not know it. That's on the side. But that main factor is what puts this soul in Akshardham after leaving this body. And Uka Khachar exemplified it flawlessly in his seva for 15 years, and I'm sure other sevas that he did. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan mentioned him in the Vajtanrut, which is priceless. So one should develop affection for God's son, just as one has affection for God's, for one's wife, son, parents, or brother. According to the Vajshram the Gurdada, 1st chapter 54th, the gateway to liberation, Bhagwan Swaminarayan states, the, a, a question is asked, that how could the gates, gateway to liberation be open? Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that by developing affection or profound love for the great Sadhu, the Ekantik Sadpurush, just as one has just as one has affection for one's parents, son, daughter, etc., so on and so forth. When one develops affection for that Satpurush, the gateway to liberation is opened. That ma that vat matches or that talk matches this point. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan states and illustrates it again in the Gadara middle chapter here in fifty ninth. But this Vachramut is very long, yet we can understand that Bhagwan Swaminarayan's perspective of liberation is different from any other avatar, any other incarnation, any other, you can say, person on this earth. Bhagwan Swaminarayan extracted his central principles from the most difficult scriptures to understand in different languages and gave it to us in one line. Who can be more compassionate than this Bhagwan? If we even think about this, then we would be able to understand and slowly comprehend his words in our mind, slowly while walking, talking, while doing something in our day-to-day -day life. Even such kind of lines can hit us inside. And due to that, our liberation will be guaranteed because we have such a Bhagwan in the form of our Pirida Gansha Maharaj, Thakurji Maharaj, and we have our Puja Guruji, who is for us our one and only. Saying this, this Vachnamrut has many, many other examples, and we'll take a look at it from Bhagwan Swaminarayan's perspective, or Guruji's perspective. We'll try our best, but whenever one understands this vachramrut everything else can be said to be done this is each and every vachramrut is in such kind of a, a fashion but bhagwan swaminarayan's compassion is beyond comprehension comprehension so saying this we'll continue this vachramrut in our next lecture saying this my humble jay swaminarayan